Well, week four is now in the books. Tony Romo throwing five interceptions last night. Chicago Bears blowing out the Dallas Cowboys. So on to week five. Hard to believe we're already at week five of the NFL season. It's just flying by, but here we are. Lines were released last night on Bet Deck. A few of these games caught my eye. I want to talk about them. Of course, we'll be releasing previews of all of these games on Bet Deck NFL as the week goes along, but I do want to talk about a few of these games quickly right now, starting with the Thursday night game. Arizona Cardinals going on the road to play the St. Louis Rams. Arizona a one-point favorite right now on Bet Deck. Cardinals the surprise of the league, of course. Nobody expected them to be 4-0 at this point of the season. Uh, squeaked out a close win last week over Miami, closer than a lot of people thought. Dolphins taking Arizona to overtime. Arizona was lucky to get to overtime. Kevin Cobb throwing a uh, fourth down touchdown pass at the end of that game just to take it to overtime. But the Cardinals are 4-0 now, again, going on the road to play St. Louis this week. A St. Louis team that has been a surprise in their own right. This team was 2-14 and last year, and in Jeff Fisher's first year as coach, they've already won as many games they won all last season. Rams are 2-2. Two and two. Both of their wins coming at home, and both of their wins, they were home underdogs. And both of those games, they were playing teams very similar to the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I don't necessarily mean similar stylistically, because the Washington Redskins certainly score a lot of points and don't play much defense, which is not the Arizona Cardinals' MO at all, but... The Rams' two home victories have been over the Redskins and the Seahawks. Both of those teams have been sort of surprise teams. They've been better than a lot of people thought they were going to be going into the year. Both those teams were short home favorites over the St. Louis Rams. Both those teams lost to the St. Louis Rams. So the same thing's happening this week. The Arizona Cardinals, a team that has surprised a lot of people, a team not many people thought was going to be very good, that it turns out they are pretty good, especially on defense, very good on defense. But the Cardinals are limited offensively. Remember, this team, they're not putting up a whole lot of points. So going on the road, St. Louis as, as a short favorite, feels like a dangerous spot to me for the Arizona Cardinals. That being said, this line is proof that people still aren't aboard that Cardinals bandwagon. And the Cardinals, they might be this year's San Francisco 49ers. I've said before, last year, San Francisco 49ers covered nine out of the first ten games. Not because they were blowing everybody out, because the first half or more of the season, people hadn't come around on that team. People were still expecting the same Alex Smith, the same San Francisco 49ers offense to come through that door that they had seen last year and the year before, but it, it just wasn't happening. They were a new team last year, Jim Harbaugh, and maybe the, Sa- uh, the Arizona Cardinals are this year's San Francisco 49ers, this year's new team that it's going to take people 9, 10, 11 weeks before they realize, hey, this is just a team with a great defense that beats almost everybody they play, does just enough offensively. We'll see. I think Thursday night will be a good test because the Rams, while the Rams are better than most people giving them credit for, and they made great strides in Jeff Fisher's first year, still a limited team. They're not as good on defense as Arizona, and Sam Bradford doesn't have a lot of weapons to work with offensively. I probably think Bradford's a little better than most people think he is. I know some people are really, really wavering on Sam Bradford now, especially after his awful performance two weeks ago against Chicago. But he's been better at home than on the road. He will be at home. Uh, a chance for him to showcase himself Thursday night in front of the football watching world. We'll be keeping an eye on that game. Again, Arizona, a one-point road favorite over the St. Louis Rams. Another game that interests me, the Atlanta Falcons, who have been as good, as good as any team in the league, 4-0, along with the Arizona Cardinals, 4-0. Squeaked by the Carolina Panthers last week, their division rival. Falcons were seven-point favorites in that game. Did not cover for the first time this year. They're short road favorites against the Washington Redskins. Now, the Washington Redskins, seems like every year, there is one team that, one team you ride and make a lot of money back in that team, and there's one team that just costs you, just costs you the whole year, and so far this season, the Washington Redskins have been that team for me. In, in four, through four weeks of the season, I've bet against the Redskins three times, and I'm only one and two in those games. Redskins have cost me money two out of those three games, including last week when I thought the Tampa Bay Bucks were going to beat them at home. Redskins pulled out a last-second win in that game. I have thought throughout the season that the Redskins were getting more credit than they, than they deserve. You know, this was a team that was 5-11 and 11 last year. They have a rookie quarterback. The reason I think a lot of people are very high on this team is because people love offense, and the Redskins have produced offense this year, and people love stars. And the Washington Redskins have a bona fide star in quarterback Robert Griffin III. But, you know, I, I thought that, that the, the Robert Griffin love, the, the Redskins love, was a little bit out of control over these first few weeks. But maybe I'm wrong. Because, again, I'm 1-2 and two betting against the Redskins, so maybe I'm undervaluing this team. And certainly at first glance, when I see Atlanta only laying three points on the road in Washington, I say, wow, this sure feels like a Falcons spot. I certainly feel like the Falcons are more than three points better than the Redskins. But maybe I need to step back and evaluate this a little bit. Again, maybe I'm not giving this Washington team enough credit. Atlanta going on the road. Is Washington going to be able to spring an upset as a short home favorite? 
I'm not sure, and I might not play on that game because again, I I don't want to you know I, I don't want to be so hard headed that I just sort of go down with the ship thinking the Redskins are, are not as good as other people do and you know just lose on them week after week. So maybe I should pull back and observe here for a minute. Certainly interesting to see that w- Washington is getting enough respect in the betting marketplace. So the Atlanta Falcons, who just you know, beat Carolina last week. They're obviously undefeated, but two weeks ago on the road, blew out the San Diego Chargers, who were three and one. Only a three-point favorite against the Washington Redskins on the road. Interesting stuff. Very interesting. Another game that's interesting, going to be interesting. The Pittsburgh Steelers at home, three and a half point favorite on Bet Dak over the Philadelphia Eagles. Now the Eagles, they've won three games, they're now three and one. They've won their three games by a combined four points. Two one-point victories, a two-point victory here this last week. Pittsburgh's been disappointing. No word yet on whether Troy Polamalu and James Harrison are going to be back for this game. Both listed as questionable right now. We'll, of course, find out as the week progresses whether these guys are going to play. And those guys are the two best players on Pittsburgh's defense. So it's obviously crucial. You know, it, It's important to find out whether or not those guys are going to play. Because we saw Pittsburgh against the Oakland Raiders without those guys look absolutely awful. Carson Palmer shredded that Pittsburgh secondary. And look for Michael Vick and that Philadelphia passing, passing attack to have similar success if Palomalu is not back, if Harrison's not back, if Philadelphia is not able to pressure the passer. Now, this is a tough spot for Philadelphia. I lean towards Pittsburgh here. Again, only minus three and a half. Feels like Pittsburgh should be favored by about five or six to me in this game. But Philadelphia, you know, maybe uh, Philadelphia has gotten a lot of credit this year, has got a lot of respect in the betting marketplace. Even though they're three and one, they're only one and three against the number. So people have been overvaluing this Philadelphia team a little bit. And this week could be a case of that again. Again, Pittsburgh only three and a half point home favorites over Philadelphia. Hard not to lean towards the Steelers right now, in my opinion, early in the week. Now it's it's way too early for me to be making any of these calls. Again, we'll see the injury report as as the week progresses, and we'll we'll get to studying these games a little closer and get to more final decisions as the weekend approaches. But early lean certainly towards Pittsburgh minus three and a half and home against Philadelphia. Now another game that's sure to be a, a marquee game, a game that's talked about a lot throughout the week. Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos going on the road to face the New England Patriots. New England, tell you what, in the middle of the third quarter of that game last week against Buffalo, me, you, and everybody else watching that New England game were thinking the same thing. Is this the changing of the guard? Buffalo was up 21-7 in that game. Looked like they were on the verge of going 3-1, and one, sending the New England Patriots to 1-3 and three through four weeks, which would have been unbelievable. But just when you thought, maybe it's happening. Maybe the New England team, maybe the dynasty is over. Tom Brady, Tom Brady is getting old. Just when you thought that was happening, 45 points in the last quarter and a half. New England ended up with 52 points in that game after only having seven in the third quarter. So the Patriots, I mean, I saw them last week, saw them the week before against the Ravens. On offense, this is the same old unit we're used to. Hey, hey Tom Brady, he might be getting old. He's not past his prime yet. He is still doing it. New England, a seven-point home favorite against Denver. This strikes me as a lot of points. This opened to seven and a half in Vegas. It's moved to seven most places out there. Again, it is seven on bet deck. The Denver Broncos last week just routed the Oakland Raiders. And Peyton Manning, while he might not have his arm strength, no question about it, he has not thrown downfield as much so far this season as he did in his prime in Indianapolis. They did plenty of short and intermediate passing in Indianapolis, but also Peyton Manning threw the ball down the field to Marvin Harrison, to Reggie Wayne, lots. And we haven't really seen that so far this year. But what we have seen, aside from that, Peyton Manning has looked like Peyton Manning. This Denver offense has been extremely efficient. They've sort of looked like Indianapolis Colts light, (laughs) meaning Indianapolis Colts throughout the Manning years, that is. And so I think they're going to have success on this New England defense. New England is vulnerable on defense. Denver on the road is a seven-point underdog here. Again, that feels like a lot of points. I would expect New England to win this game. Wouldn't be at all surprised. It was very close and competitive. So Denver in the points, an early lean there this week. That could be a good bet. I don't know. We'll see again as the week progresses and, and we take a closer look at this game, see some injury reports and things like that. Another game I want to talk about, the Sunday night game, a game that I'm going to be watching, most everybody's going to be watching, the New Orleans Saints hosting the San Diego Chargers. Is this finally the week the Saints break through and become the team everybody expected them to be? The Saints are actually a three and a half point favorite in this game. Now the Saints are 0-4, a three and a half point favorite over a three and one team who just came off a blowout, a blowout road win. San Diego blowing out Kansas City on the road last week. The same Kansas City team that beat New Orleans on the road two weeks ago. 
So obviously this, this line, New Orleans being favored by three and a half, that is just a show of respect to New Orleans and what they have been in the past. Because last year, remember, New Orleans 9-0 and at home, both straight up and against the number. I mean, they were just a, a, a cover machine at home. A, a closer thing is a sure bet as there was really not only in the NFL, but in the sporting world with the New Orleans Saints at home. Now they've lost both of their home games so far this year. Again, three and a half point favorites over San Diego. Two ways to look at this line. One way is, if you lean towards San Diego, you're probably saying, people still don't realize what's going on with the Saints. This team is imploding. You know, jump on a team who's 3-1, and one, getting points against this winless Saints team. The other way to look at that is, because of the Saints' bad start, because of the, the head-scratching way they've played throughout the year. Now, that really wasn't the case last week in Green Bay. They played well in Green Bay, could have won that game, so maybe the Saints are waking up a little bit. But if you're looking at it from New Orleans' angle, you say maybe because of this poor start, that's what's made the line nice and reasonable here. Because no doubt about it, if this game were week one, the Saints would be mm, seven, seven and a half point favorites, home favorites over San Diego. But this number down to three and a half now. So if you're a believer that New Orleans has turned it around, that they've hit their rock bottom and they're on the way up, then New, England, then New Orleans minus three and a half at home might look pretty attractive. But if you think this Saints team is just sinking and in free fall, and in free fall, excuse me, you're probably wondering how a team like the San Diego Chargers is getting points, and you're probably going to rush out right now to legally rob your bookie. Now the Saints, they might have have it cranked back up on offense, but expect the Chargers to score some points too in this game because the Saints are bad on defense, and Philip Rivers and that San Diego offense, aside from Week Three against Atlanta, has been very good this year. That that offense has been very good. Last game I want to mention, a game that. You know, it's the Monday night game, the New York Jets and the Houston Texans. Jets hosting the Texans. These two teams have, there's been a lot of talk about these teams over the last few days for very different reasons. Houston Texans, this team might be as good as any team in the NFL. I mean, this team has won and covered every game this year. Their spreads just keep getting bigger, and the Texans just keep covering those numbers. A nine point road favorite over the Jets on Bet Deck. Now, a moment on this line. This line in Las Vegas opened at Houston minus four and a half. It has since moved to seven and a half every place in Vegas. It's seven and a half. It is nine on BetTech. So uh, the BetTech people, a little foresight, thinking this line is going to probably move even higher than seven and a half in most other places. Houston minus nine on the road against the Jets. Now, if you saw the Jets last week get blown out 34 nothing by San Francisco, you probably understand this line. But I tell you what, this is a lot of points to be given a team that you just was embarrassed. A team's going to be on national TV with a good defense. I mean, you know, this defense, I mean, their manhood was challenged. It, it, San Francisco ran for, what, 250 yards or something on this defense. This is not a bad defense. I know Darrell Rivas is out now, but, you know, it, it wasn't Darrell Rivas that was responsible for giving up all that rushing yardage in the last game. So... The Jets have been challenged. Look for them to respond from that challenge. They're tied for first in the AFC East. It's not like this is the, you know, they're not the Kansas City Chiefs. This is not a team. We're not shoveling dirt on them. Some people are shoveling dirt on them, but that might be a little premature. Again, this team 2-2. Two and two. How are they going to score points, though? Look absolutely awful on offense. Absolutely awful. The Mark Sanchez era in, in New York might be just about done. Because when you look at this team now, with San Antonio Holmes out, limited playmakers on offense, you know, I said it dawned on me watching the games last week. Listen, last year's Denver Bronco offense, no one would say that was a thing of beauty. No one would say that's an ideal offense to run in the NFL. They did not pass the ball enough, did not pass the ball effectively enough. Certainly, you'd much rather have an offense like New Orleans or New England that just put 40 points up on the board and scored and scored and scored. But if the choices are the Denver Broncos offense of last season, which led the league in rushing, was effective in keep, keeping opponents' offenses off the field because they used up the clock, they ran the ball so much, again, leading the league and rushing. So the Denver defense instantly became a lot better once they started running that run-heavy uh, read option offense. If the choices are that offense and this quote-unquote conventional offense from the Jets, if what we saw last week was conventional offense, I'm sorry, if I'm a Jets fan, leading the league and rushing, maybe winning your division, letting the, you know, staying in a lot of these games, letting your defense win some of these games, maybe winning your division and winning a playoff game like Denver did last year, that sounds pretty good to me. If the alternative is this conventional offense, Mark Sanchez with no weapons, completing less than half his passes, throwing for 100 yards. Man, Tim Tebow can complete less than half his passes and throw for 100 yards, and he can run, all right? Sanchez can't run. And so to, I, I think it, it might be Tebow time. It might be Tebow time in New York. And I'll tell you what, they're not going to start Tebow this Monday. But if it gets ugly against the Houston Texans, which it might, obviously the Texans a nine-point road favorite. A lot of people thinking this game could get ugly. 
it might be Tebow time in New York come week six. And I tell you what, maybe it should be. Maybe it should be. Because after what we've seen out of Mark Sanchez and that offense over the last couple of weeks, where do you go? I mean, with San Antonio Holmes out, Tim Tebow is the, the best playmaker on that offense. I mean, and, and it, 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 it's not a, it doesn't say anything good about the Jets' offense, but Tebow's scrambling, his running out of the pocket, that's, that's the Jets' best form of offense right now. So what will the Jets look like on Monday night? How will they evolve? Will we see more Tim Tebow? Will we see the end of the Mark Sanchez era? Will the Jets be blown out? Nine-point home underdogs to the Houston Texans. Should be a very intriguing, very interesting game to watch. Now, again, we'll be having previews of that game and every other game here on BetDeck NFL as the week progresses, so be sure to, to, to check back daily. If you're an NFL fan, if you like betting on NFL, we try to make BetDeck NFL sort of your home. If you have any suggestions, any comments, feedback on the site, John at BetDeck NFL is how you get to me. That's John at BetDeck NFL. We'll be seeing you over the next couple days, at least in video form. We'll be speaking to you live Sunday. Remember, we live stream every Sunday right here from the BetDeck NFL War Room. So for BetDeck NFL, I'm John Arnett.